Hey guys, you are live at Thursday Tom Talks. We got Amber Ingalls here. Once again, my dad is missing. Mandy Swart, we have Brett Wingfield watching and Kirsten Morris running the camera for us. But we are here and we are going to talk to you about rocks today. Um, we are live every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time. And we're doing a variety of different videos every week. So tune in for that. If you've missed them, don't worry. Our giveaways last the whole entire week and you can always go back and re-watch the videos. So let us know if you have any questions, comment in the comment box and we will answer them as we go along. So tune in. What is that? What? <laughs> Uncle Clem, what, what are you doing? Since my baby left, my found a new place to dwell down at the end of Lonely Street. They told me to come for the rock video. Rock making. We're making rocks today. I don't get to play and entertain the folks? Not today, but I'm sure they'll be oh, watching man, today. man, I was geared up. <laughs> All right. All next right. time, next time. Next time, promise? <laughs> All right. See y'all, good fun. Have a good rock making video, everybody. It's pretty boring compared to the rock and roll video you were going to have. <laughs> All right, back to the rock making video. Amber, take it away. All right, so a lot of you taxidermists will run into problems where you're going to want to put some scenery with your mounts. Um, being able to make rocks with mache is a really, really handy thing. You can make them in any different kind of shape, specific shapes um, that you need to fill certain areas. They add a lot of character, so it's just a really good thing to practice and just kind of get down as far as how to do. Um, we usually start with fish foam for our base. This is, uh, yep, the stuff that they use to carve the fish with. It's uh, really nice and, and light, so it's easy to carve. Um, and it works really well. So I think that we'll start with this, and I'm just gonna cut some out. You can also use, um, you can pour your own foam for rocks, or you could take just any old junk uh, mannequin laying around. You always have pieces and things like that laying around. Um, you could use some of those leftover pieces for, for the base as well. But I'm gonna warn you, it's gonna get really, really squeaky here, so I'll try to minimize it. Should've done that before. Yeah. Um, while she's doing that, I'll talk about some things. Happy first day of summer, everyone. That's exciting. We have some tank tops for those of you that want to show off your muscles or for you ladies. Um, they're only $16 and basically all our employees want tank tops because it's super hot. So we are doing a tank top shirt thing. So check that out. One of the sales starting today through Sunday at midnight, we are doing 15% off mule deer. All our Sagebrush Series mule deer. So you have the early season and the regular ones and along with um, Brian Olson's 200 MD ear liner. So that's a great deal. So get online or call us tomorrow and we will get that going for you. So again, first day of summer and sagebrush sale. Promo code 15MD. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Sunday at midnight it's over so get your orders in. Oh, welcome. Tom Matuska everybody. Hi everybody. Sir, I was late. I was changing a tire. Now, you might think I was changing a tire, but I wasn't. I was changing a tire on Clem's tour bus. He plays with some traveling group. I can't even remember the name of Tone Deaf something or others. But uh, I was changing a tire. Oh, my gosh. So we're making rocks today, huh, guys? Yes. Yeah. Um, we do a lot, of, a lot of habitat here, all kinds of habitat, everything from large mammals down to small mammals. We need habitat for our fish, we need habitat for our birds, um, just about everything. And sometimes we can buy it and it's convenient to buy it and a lot of times we need something custom so we can uh, make our own. And Amber's one of our best little rock makers we've got here and she makes a Beautiful, beautiful rock, and she's going to show you how to do this. 
The first time I ever saw mache rocks being made was in the 19, early 1980s in, at a tax review in Milwaukee. And the people from Jonas Brothers were making mache rocks. And uh, it was the most fascinating thing I'd ever seen. I'd been a tax for 20 minutes and uh, I wanted to make rocks like that. Remember to stay tuned, we're going to have, we have a Father's Day giveaway and we also have last week's giveaway to announce at the end of our hour, along with what is going to be going for the giveaway the following week. So you'll have a week to kind of like, share, and take a friend to get in for that. So stay tuned. Now Amber, it looks like you're just chopping up styrofoam, but as I see your mind working, I see you thinking before you cut everything. What are you looking for? What are you trying to make? Um, when we start off, a lot of times when you start off with that foam, it's, you know, it's perfectly shaped, perfectly, it's got a lot of 90 degree angles. Um, when you make mache rocks, you want to start off with something that resembles a rock underneath. Okay, so you don't want to put mache over the top of something that's going to resemble a, a chunk of a 2 by 4 laying on your face. So we want to get away from, from the the rectangle and the square look and we're going to just start making some edges and I like now this would be to make more of these kind of rocks that have more of the sharp corners on them so I'm just kind of kind of shaping it to get it so it doesn't look square and it's just kind of got some nice cool angles going on on there as you notice when I was carving um, Sometimes instead of just cutting all the way through, I'll cut through part of the way and then break the foam. And that'll kind of give you some cool angles on its own without having to really think about it too hard. And you made these, right? These are like as realistic as you could ever find. Lay them out the outside and you wouldn't know them from the real rock. <laughs> What are some of the advantages of making your own rocks versus using real rocks? Why would we make why would we make rocks? We do a lot of custom poses on everything. Even if you buy a buy a mannequin, you the base you pick out probably isn't going to fit. The feet aren't going to conform. Um, you're going to have to alter the feet. And this way, we can add them for effect, or we can create the whole base out of rocks like this and uh, custom build the base to suit our mannequin and the pose that the customer wants. He's wicked with that knife, I know. <laughs> and we're using fish foam here. You can use old mannequin foam. Um, you know, a lot of people do that. You alter it warm and you've got chunks of, of the heads you, you just started, don't throw that away because it makes great um, uh, rock, a little bit harder foam. You could pour a foam base out of two-part urethane. Another yeah. advantage would be the weight. The weight for sure. Very lightweight and easy to use and doesn't weigh down all your mouth. Now it depends on what it is. Um, you can, if it, if it needs some kind of stability, your mouth maybe is heavy and needs some structural stability, um, you can embed a, a two by four or a block of wood inside of there or maybe a pad of Bondo um, to, just kinda okay, you've got a hollow in that one. Now something over the years we noticed, don't let the mache come right in contact with the wood because the wood wicks the moisture out of the mache and they tend to crack after a while. So bed your wood deep enough so there's foam over it. The foam rocks don't crack. If there's wood touching the mache, they can develop, seem to develop a crack oftentimes. Okay, so I think, should we go ahead and start maybe macheing some? You bet. And we're gonna use some of Matuska's rock mache here today for this. And it's a really nice mixture. It's got some good texture to it, which is really important. Um, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's, it's all about texture and color, texture, color. So, 
you want to start off with a good mache. We sell this rack mache in 5 pound, 10 pound, um, 25 and 100 pound boxes. We also sell regular mache. What's the difference with regular mache and rack mache? The rack mache has additives that give it, um, that accept paint differently. Um, it's got some vermiculite in it, it's got cork in it, it's got different dextrins in it. Um, mica, it's got different things that, that add to the look of a rock. Um, it also is an extremely strong, strong mache and um, you know, will, will stand up to any mount that you put on it. Okay, now how thick do you want this? You're gonna pour water into there, I'm betting. Yep, yep. Um, I like mine to be pretty, pretty thick. You don't want it too thin, otherwise as you're putting it on, you're just gonna fight it because it'll continuously try to run off. So we're gonna mix it pretty, pretty thick. I do like to add a little bit of salt to the mixture and what the salt will do because it's a plaster based material it'll help dry it up faster so so it'll make it set a little bit faster so for the purposes of the video we'll just add a little bit of salt to the mixture and this will take a little bit of practice if you get this at home put a little salt in if you don't see a difference put a little more salt um, you can put enough salt in that you would weaken it but I would say from the looks of it she put in maybe a a half of a teaspoon in that amount of mache. Yep. And then for me, I usually will add too much water if I try to pour it out of a faucet or try to pour it out of a cup. So I like to do it with the sponge. And these are just sea sponges. We're gonna be using these after we get the mache on for doing the texturing. So we wanna make sure when you're ready to start making your rocks and you get into this process, you have everything there and ready to roll. You don't want to be running around, you know, where's the sea sponge, where's my, where's my uh, this, where's my that, you know, it, it gets very frustrating while, you're, while your rocks are drying if you don't have everything already. So I'm just adding a little bit here and there, here and there. Um, if you would get it too thin, it's not the end of the world, which I think I just did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, all you have to do is just go ahead and add a little bit more mache to the mixture and then it'll harden, harden it, stiffen the mixture back up. So Now this recipe is, I mean, older than I am, so it's really, really old before they even had plaster and for sure rubber mixing bowls. But um, um, Dale Bussey um, actually built trophy rooms like mountains for sheep mountains in trophy rooms and waterfall type mountains and in his house he has above his fireplace a ledge it goes all the way up to his vaulted ceiling and it's got a ledge for um, his sheep that he got and another ledge for his mountain lion and it all looks really really nice natural rock did the entire thing out of this over hardwood hmm. cloth wow wow that would be really more than a box see. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> all right, so we got it all mixed up. You can kind of see it's some pretty thick stuff. It doesn't want to come off of, your, off of your tool too easily. And so that means when we go ahead and put it onto the foam, it's going to stay pretty much where we put it. Huh? Kind of like yogurt that's been in the refrigerator six months too long. <laughs> Texture and everything. couple things you're using, that spatula you're using there is, we sell in five different styles and that's the angled one. Mm -hmm. um, that's the number four inch for 425 and it's got a little, you can see it there. It's this end one. That guy right there. And it makes for a little easy spreading like butter. Um, another thing you're using is our new rubber flexible bowls, which are on the website because the catalog's already out. So you can go online or ask our ladies on the phone, but there's your large, your medium, which is what Amber uses and will not go without. No. Um, these are great. And the extra small. Don't try to wash these out when you get done. Let your machets and your plasters or your bondos, whatever it happens to be, harden up in this. And all you need to do is flex it yep. and tap it over the garbage and they're cleaned up. Yep. And you're looking at $8.50 for the small all the way up to $14.95 for the large. And they will go fast, so make sure you get your orders in. 
Yeah, those bowls are an absolute lifesaver for any time that you're working with mache, even if, when you're, like if you're uh, using mache, premium mache or, or a different kind of mache to set your deer antlers. Again, if you've had to sit there and try and scrape mache out of a Tupperware, you'll know exactly what I mean, that it's extremely frustrating. So these are awesome. You give them one little squeeze, cracks up, dump it in the garbage, good, clean, ready to go again. You've had your little green bowl for oh, probably as years. long as I've known you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you even paid more. I will say other vendors are at least 2 to $3 higher than us. So the two How can that be? Because I'm nice to our customers and I like to pass on discounts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as I'm putting this on here, I'm kind of following the contour of what I had carved. So I put it on and I just kind of, I'm looking along the foam and saying, yep, that's kind of goes straight there. And I'm putting on a nice little patty. You don't want to make it too thin because we want these rocks to be lightweight, but we want them to be durable. Um, if, you, if you make them too thin, just know that something, sometime you're gonna bump it or, or a customer will bump it. Um, and that's the last thing you want to get a call from your customer saying that, that their base fell apart because you made your mache rocks too thin. So I'm just kind of turning it around here and covering up the foam. And the thickness that I'm putting on is, oh, it's about a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch mm -hmm. or so. Now remember, the object of this is to, you want a lightweight rock, but you don't want to get it on there so thin, eighth-inch thick so that it, it can crack. This mache has a lot of strength if it's thick enough, um, so there's a happy medium between the weight and um, the strength. So you want it thick enough to be real durable, but you want it thin enough to be real lightweight. So now that we got it all covered, With this kind of a rock, I carved this one so it didn't have quite as many edges. It still has a little bit of shape to it. It doesn't look like a complete egg, but we're gonna just kind of let this be for a little bit and let that mache stiffen up some. And we're gonna come back with that sea sponge that I had showed you in just a little bit. And we're gonna dab it lightly and we're gonna give it some texture. Now, the main thing that I see when people make rocks is that they come in and they start hitting that, hitting the rock right away with the texture too early. And what happens is it makes it look volcanic. It makes it really, really rough. Um, and it's all about texture and color. So if, you're, if your texture is poor, you're not gonna be able to color it well. You're gonna really, really struggle when it comes time to paint these things to make them look real. So really be careful how much you texture. And we use the same method even on our large animals. Um, using foam to build a large base is kind of cost prohibitive. So we will make a wood frame and put hardware cloth or quarter inch screen over the framework and then mache over that, probably a quarter to a half inch, probably a half inch of mache over that, texture it exactly like she's gonna be doing here, um, mm -hmm. except instead of the foam underneath, we use hardware cloth. Sure. And you can make much larger bases. Just like doing a cake. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen some people get in there with their hands and do that. The only problem is that it does get pretty messy at that point, mm. but it can be well, nice to just kind of get in there. Our new oh. black nitrile gloves in a hanging organizational case. Mandy, I'll tell you what, you are a <laughs> lifesaver because you just know how dirty I am always I getting my hands. <laughs> it would have been nice to have five Red minutes ago. <laughs> my mind, yeah. <laughs> just oh, one or would you so like funny. two? Um, no, I'll take two of them. <laughs> These are for sale online. Uh, we have size medium, large, and extra large. They're 50% thicker. They had three times the puncture resistance than your latex. 
and they're just durable and all that. So we also have them in blue, yeah. but the black kind of, I know. Yeah, they're I good know. and durable. Nor, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times so. I've ripped the, ripped the oh, tops put them off. On. Yeah, put them on. That's a size I part. did it just I'm getting the habit in your shop of wearing gloves because as yep. taxidermists, we come in contact with a lot of stuff we shouldn't be touching. And, uh, you know, people con contract, you know, diseases, you know, different things and illnesses from um, who knows what you're touching. So get in the habit of um, wearing rubber gloves. Yeah. It's good practice. New gloves and organize it with your wire rack. Comes with screws and everything to just keep it off the table, on the wall. Good idea. For pulling out. Really good idea. Very good. Idea. We, we got three boxes on the table over there. Think how much room we could save. You could. Absolutely. You ready for a question? Yep. Sure. Shane Halstead says, do you ever use the artificial rock sheets? Yes. Yep. Yes, we do. And uh, um, that's another, another method, and we can show you how to do that in a, another issue, but that's um, um, by cutting up, they're made of styrofoam, and they have a little gel coat, kind of a polyethylene crust on them, and you can cut them into chunks, and they work really good for large animals. We never have one when we need one, you know, and we have to order. This is something you can make quickly, but we do use those. Jared Embry, I had the information <laughs> last week but didn't get to bring it up. So what I'm doing is I'm going to our website, pulling up Matuska Taxidermy and the supplies, and if you scroll, there's What's New tab. And of Hit course, done. it's, where? I don't, I'm upside down, sorry. And then you see, oh, we got some new wire for the alterations. Um, how long ago did we put those on? A lot on? of fun stuff. There's a wire rack, the gloves are right here. And after it loads, I will tell you. But I did have it wrote down last week. And Jared, your chickens are looking phenomenal. They are. Oh, you should, did you? See? Ooh, yeah, the, the skull. skull. The skull, the is, skull cool. is cool. Mm -hmm. um, Thirteen ninety-five. So steal of a deal. I see Jared wear black. <laughs> <laughs> It'll match his <laughs> arms. <laughs> Love you, Jared. <laughs> Thirteen ninety-five for a box of a hundred. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do one that's got a little bit more edges, more of your shale rock. And again, just kind of putting a nice nice patty on it. If you're scraping and you're seeing foam, you just, just remember, just kind of like she said, it's kind of like icing a cake. Put a, leave a nice layer on there. And mache is not very expensive, so um, as long as, if you need one rock, make two or three. The one that you thought you were going to use might not be as attractive to you uh, when you get done, but don't throw it away. Save it, and someday that rock will be the exact shape and size and color of one you need. Yep. And practice makes perfect with these, really. I mean, when, when you first start making rocks, you probably aren't going to be the happiest with them right away, but with a little bit of practice, it is something that you can get pretty crafty with and it will really, really make a big difference with your taxidermy mounts. There was a man by the name of Jerome Sokolik, who a lot of you Iowa people will remember, and, and uh, um, some his family brought him to the show. He's elderly, quite elderly, elderly now, and uh, his family members brought him to the Iowa show oh, a couple years ago. But Jerome, for the Iowa, um, Taxidermy Association would put on seminars on making rocks similar to what Amber's doing and he had a notebook, a photo book of rocks for color and texture like yes. like you deer taxidermists have books of eyes and ears and, and briskets. He had a notebook loaded with all different styles and shapes and colors of rocks and he considered reference for rocks as important as his animal reference. And Jerome made the most beautiful rocks anybody's ever seen out of mache, this exact technique. And um, we call them Jerome rocks. We call these, we call these Jerome rocks forever. Yep. Thanks to Jerome Soklik. Tremendous taxidermist, tremendous taxidermist. Entered the Iowa show time and time again. Um, I don't think I ever know, knew him to do a specific competition mount, he would take his customer mounts that he would oh, wow. give to his customers and bring them, take them I'd off the wall so and bring them. to see that go after all the time you put all in. All of his work was like that. Jerome was a true
true, true artist when we didn't have preset eyes, we didn't have septums, we didn't, we didn't even know what nictitating membranes were. Jerome did everything by hand. There were no cast noses. There were no, you know, blood vessels in your forms and things like that. He made it all from scratch. Hmm. So you're kind of making sharp little cuts there. I am, I am. And I'm putting it on just heavy enough that I can kind of create character with the mache. Doesn't have to go all the way down to the foam. Um, a lot of people, when I first see them doing this, they'll put tons and tons of detail into their, into their foam carvings. But really, you're putting so much so much mache and, and patty of, of mache over the top, you're not gonna lose all of that detail. So save the fine detail for when you put the mache on. And I'm just kinda running over it with some water. I've got a bucket of water here. I'm just kinda dabbing my hand down into that and just kinda giving it some different edges and characters. Ray Lamb, have you ever casted rocks from local area? Oh, lots and lots of time. Yep, we do it. Yep. We do it often. Kenny O'Hara, do you color the, your rocks with watered down tempera paints or use some acrylics? Um, I always use tempera paints and got by pretty well. Um, Amber uses acrylics and gets by much nicer than mine. I, I use tempera paints for a lot of years and, and I still like them. I mean, you can, especially with mache rocks, they really, with the, the lighter mache, you can pull off some nice looking rocks. But along with that, you could, yeah, some of the acrylic paints work really, really well too. Um, they're a little bit easier, I think, to work with because the tempera paints come in really, really basic colors. So then you're stuck trying to do a lot of mixing to get them there, which is where Tom's set here oh. come in really, really handy. We actually developed these paint kits. Um, we had a video, which we will once again make, um, and it it uh, showed, we, we will do this, is that our next seminar? Rock painting, yep, next week we'll be rock painting. Making, making out of this? Sure. Okay. Uh, we're going to show you next week how to make a rock, how to cast a rock um, in a mold that you can use over and over and over again. And we have kits available to where you can buy, uh, it comes with latex, it comes with burlap, it comes with uh, mold release, everything you need as well as paints um, and a paint theme. And uh, we used to have a real popular, it was a VCR, and because we copied it so many times, um, it kind of deteriorated, but we do need to remake it because we've had a lot of demand for it. But these are basic. We can make a pretty darn nice looking rock with four basic colors. And not only that, but we have, so we have the three different rock kit schemes, which would be the Colorado, the desert, uh, Utah Canadian, red. Utah red. So oh. with these kits, they're thirty ninety five. You want to push those to the side? You get full front and back instructions, basically of start to finish. You have a large burlap. What do you use the burlap for? The burlap is to reinforce your, your latex mold. And there's a lot of different ways. We make silicone molds um, for a lot of our rocks, but silicone's very expensive. Um, when you were a little bitty girl, you and Mark made all those I remember that. giant rock molds. They were in elementary school. Somebody else was just saying they had their grandkids last Com week. Uh, David Compton. David Compton was saying that he had his grandkids doing it. And uh, Mark and Mandy, I put them outside. I went and bought rocks down at the nursery. And I think I probably told you I picked I picked that one. How much are these rocks? They're like... Uh, two cents a pound and I'm thinking, oh wow, they're like free. I'll take that one, that one, that one, that one. And they delivered them and I get like a $500 bill. And I go, how can that be? Well, that one weighs 1,500 pounds. So pennies add up a lot. Anyway. Recreate it and put it back out there. It's still, it's right out there right now. Well, I got about six of them and you and Mark uh, made latex molds for me. And I still I have those that. molds and we still use those molds. Latex will last almost forever. You do have a lot of those laying around. We do. So. You have the burlap, you have the full instructions. This is a sponge that Amber's using. Yes. You get one, two. Colors. Three, four different colors, and that's depending on the kit that you purchase. 
You get deep flex mold release. This is a great mold release for latex. If you ever need to get something out of a latex mold, deep flex is the only thing that will do it. Chip brush, always necessary in a shop. And your molding latex, again. quart of latex. And this so, will make a pretty decent sized rock. It'll probably make a rock, um, maybe two rocks like Amber's working on there, rock molds. And you will be able to recreate that rock 100 times and your latex mold is still gonna hold together. So this is 30, 30.95 for those kits. And those kits are, here's kind of just to show you the page in the catalog. But right here, page 141, are all your kits. These are the color schemes. And then we actually sell them individually in four ounce, eight ounce, and 16 ounce. So you can kind of come up with your own schemes like Amber does. But and these are the same, these are the same paints, acrylic paints, um, similar to what Amber does. You can mix them, you can match them, um, you can get different kinds, you know, yep. make it custom any color, customize any color you want. Okay, so this rock here, I wanted it to be pretty smooth because we're going to go for kind of a uh, kind of rock that's more underwater. So I'm not going to give that one a whole lot of texture. When I had it sitting there, I kind of got a funny little edge around the bottom. So I'll just kind of come in here with a rasp. And that's going to bust off anyway, so do it now and you won't have a white piece of mache showing. Yep. So do you just pour the latex mold or do you make a fiberglass to, to support? Um, we just make the latex mold unless we get into a very large one. Um, just the latex mold and with the burlap, um, it thickens up the walls and it should be a standalone mold. There's out there. Can I go get one? No. I don't think you're going to. I saw them there on the shelf. Oh. We'll show them next week. And to get these sharp edges here when making your rocks, it's important to make sure that you have enough mache on there. If you're really, really skimping for mache, you're not going to be able to get good sharp corners. So if you're if you're needing to make a corner, I'll take and kind of drag some extra mache towards your corner. Do the same on the top and the bottom, and then just kind of run your run your tool along the side on the top and the bottom, and you'll be able to get really nice defined edges. And now um, you're using our two and a fourth inch palette knife. So are those mm -hmm. your two go-tos when you're making rocks? Yeah, I like the smaller one for doing for doing edges because I'm not nicking the sides with the with the big long one so the smaller one can work really nice and they clean up fine and yeah yeah they're, they're flexible great. they're Just great use them for bondo don't let the bondo harden up that's what i always do yeah then i have to sand them off and then we're going to go ahead and kind of do a little bit of dabbing and what that what the sea sponge is going to do and it's gotten pretty stiff but you can see it's kind of taken out all of those little marks and it's given a little bit of indentation in here to help it look more rock like so like here you can see some of the knife marks from the from our tools so we're just gonna go ahead <laughs> yeah. and uh, dab it here And you're going to show them how to paint these rocks, right? Yeah. Do you ever paint them before they're before they're dry, or do you ever put uh, pigment in your mache? Can you do that? You could add pigment in your mache. Like sure. with what? What color? Sure. Paint or like oil paint or what? What's my hair look like? Because when Amber looked at me, she looked at the top of my head. Is it look funny? <laughs> no, looks good. You can always tell. Looks good. You got a fresh cut the other day. <laughs> I got the rest of it cut the next day too. But yeah, no, we, we'll we'll go ahead and paint, and then uh, <laughs> Tom, you're such a nut. <laughs> Joe Martin, I always place my orders online, but I would love a catalog if you could send one. Here's the deal: I am trying to work very hard at getting the 2019 ready, but we, because of demand, are very very low on our 2018. But if you call and ask specifically for me for your next order. I will give you mine off my desk because I have two. You cut it close this year. Very close. That's so a good thing. I got a couple months left, but we have a few laying around. So on your next order, 
call and we'll give you one of ours from our desk so you can have it until the 2019 comes out. That's service. I know. <laughs> can't, off give, your desk. can't give you my Bible one that says Mandy across the front, but I'll give you my side one. <laughs> you wouldn't want that. That's all over. And then sometimes we also like to have different cracks and things like these in here. I'll let, you can, it's pretty stiff. It's pretty stiff. I mean, if I'm tapping on it like this, I'm barely leaving anything. So I like to let it harden up a little bit because otherwise it just kind of runs. And then you can take the point of your tool and kind of come in here a little bit. It might have stiffened up a little bit more than what I would normally like. But no, you can kind of take and come in here and carve. Amber's talent, but this is something you can buy a box of mache and show your kids how to do this. You bet. And, uh, and it doesn't take long before a beginner can make a pretty nice looking rock. But child labor laws are knocking on your door. <laughs> <laughs> come here, Quinn, come work <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> Saturday at the shop. No, you're not going out to play. You got to make rocks today. <laughs> so well, we're Sarah just Adler's watching. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Miss you. <laughs> All right, so for those of you just tuning in or late, we go live every Thursday at 4.30, and it's a different topic every week. Next week is going to be painting, I believe. Um, if you've missed our videos, go to our Facebook page and you can watch all of our videos um, under videos, but you can rewatch all of them. You can rewatch this video and catch Clem jamming out at the beginning if you missed it by that after it's over going back. She's using those flexible bowls. And now it's all broke off of the sides. It's still pretty wet. This is the last mixture that we just did, so it doesn't take long. And now. You got pretty much a clean bowl. And again, these will be online or call and ask, but they are now for sale in four sizes or one of each for a kit. And I'm just and gonna do one more thing here before I move on to painting. Don't dump your mache down the drain. No. Why not? Well. Even if it's thinned out, super thin? No, students do that. Oftentimes here, lacquer thinner <laughs> and mache seem to go down the drain sometimes. I got no, it. Maybe not like that. Put Dawn in it. Is that what does it? It works for me. It ended up coming apart and <laughs> come out. It was bad. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up one more because while we were talking, I kind of missed a little bit as far as what when to texture and, and as far as what it'll look like if you're texturing too soon. And it's kind of a biggie because, like I said, if you if your texture is bad, you're gonna have a Hard, 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 hard time painting. So, so I'm just gonna. So Jose could be burnt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late to show you on the last one, so I'm gonna do like a little test run spot up here, and I'll show you early and just right and too late. So I'm just gonna kind of put a nice patty on here. Now we use another mache, which is called premium mache, and you asked what the difference was. The premium mache um, is very similar, except without the, the rock enhancements in it. Um, we do a lot of antler setting with premium mache, blending, you know, logs and things. And it sets up the same, it just doesn't have the... Sets up pretty much the same, yes. And what's your set time, would you say? Strong 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. And... Like you saw her put uh, salt in to begin with, a little bit of salt speeds up your time. If you ever thought you needed more time um, and didn't want it to set up fast, you can substitute borax, 20 meal team borax, like most taxidermists have in the shop, and uh, that will slow, you, slow your set time down. Again, just like the salt, too much borax will weaken your mache, too much salt will weaken your mache. Okay. We're all done there. I'm just gonna leave that and just let that sit for a little bit. And it's pretty, pretty thin right now. So we're just gonna let that be. And I'm gonna kind of switch gears here. I'll set that one right up in the front. 
I went ahead and made up some rocks earlier. So these are the exact same thing done the exact same way. This is like a cooking show. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. It's just like, <laughs> this is what it's like when you take it out of the oven. <laughs> Cake's done. Okay, so similar, exact same thing. This one here, I had gone ahead and even did the bottom. Sometimes I'll do that if you're gonna be making a rock pile and you're gonna have several rocks, I will actually do a whole rock all the way around, which, so you would have it sitting, and then you'd go ahead and pick it up after the first layer is done, and then continue. Um, one thing to remember, when we're doing this too, when you finish with one little mixture and you have to mix up another one, there's gonna be different dry times. It'll dry at a, at a later time, but when you layer new mache over old mache, the old mache sucks the water out of it and it'll dry faster. So as soon as you put new mache over an edge, you have to get it smoothed in right away. Otherwise, it still you'll sticks have together. a bad... It doesn't yes. have a problem sticking? No, nope, nope. it still sticks together just fine, but it, it, uh, it'll dry right away and then you'll have a hard, crusty edge to it. So, so yeah, so we're going to go ahead and talk about painting these and what we're going to be using is going to be <laughs> just the acrylic paints and I like to start off with the dark paint first so that what do you need a chip brush? brush I need a chip brush well by golly we have one in the rock kit there we go as long as I replace it for whoever purchases one tomorrow <laughs> perfect. Perfect, perfect so I like to start off with a darker color first and the reason we're going to do this is so it goes down and it kind of gets down into all the textures. You can see here I have a few cracks. Um, this one here was made to look more like your shaley limestone. So it's got the deep, heavy cracks in there. So when we put in this really thinned out color, and I usually just do a really thinned out black. By thinned out, it's acrylic paint with water, right? Yep. Yep. And so this is, yeah, it's really, really thin. That one looks like it got burnt. And we're just gonna go ahead and cover it. And the nice thing about mache rocks is that, I'm just gonna take that, sea, that same sea sponge and go ahead and you can wipe it right off. And then the color will kind of set down in. If you accidentally wipe the wrong direction and wipe the color out of an area where you want, that's okay, go ahead and put it back in. And if you're making these rocks and they're turning out looking like cow pies, you're on the right track. That's how we all started making rocks. Stay away from brown. Yeah, <laughs> go easy on the browns. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is all something that we um, do cover in our nine week residential taxidermy course. Um, it's Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy. Casey Clymer, you can start your career today. Give us a call, 1-800-488-3256. We usually take, uh, we have nine weeks starting in January. We have a few openings left. We take 12 students and you're taught by all award-winning instructors. So give us a call and we'll walk you through. We are VA approved. Um, if you've already done a course somewhere, you can still call us. We have advanced courses, so we'll take your skills to the next level. Um, a lot of people want to know competition, um, quality stuff, and we do teach that, believe it or not. You can do it all. So give lots us of habitats. We do a lot of habitats. Habitat is an important part. Um, you can be the best taxidermist in the world, and if your habitat doesn't look as good as your taxidermy work, um, you're missing out. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay, so right now we're just ending up with grayish black rocks, and we don't want to make all grayish black, but this is really gonna make all that texture in there. You can kind of see where it's sitting in the low spots in the rock and that's just going to make all of that kind of pop and make it look more natural and you can leave certain sides darker and bring certain sides lighter if you look at a lot of rocks you'll see that that one whole edge will be darker than the other so i'm kind of taking and just brushing it on and then you can go ahead and just dab it with this sea sponge here how long is your course for fish feeding Ooh, that's a good question. 
depends on who teaches it. <laughs> Pace too slow is in charge of that one. Um, we are talking about, we're talking about the spring, and I think it's going to be two weeks, Brett. Does that sound right? Ish. Two weeks-ish. Um, we will come out with come up and let you guys know the details on it. We are going to be doing it. I will hold him to it. We'll hold them both to it. So that will be happening. We'll let you know the exact details when we get them figured out. That'll be the spring, I believe. And we'll, we're talking about specialty mammal courses as well. Yeah. Just look around and I was like, hmm. Um, what would you like? Um, I don't know. Again, I mentioned earlier, but we have 15% off our mule deer sale starting today through Sunday, and it includes Brian Olson's 200 MD ear liners. So get in on that. And um, those are fabulous mule deer and fabulous ears to go with mule deer. Yeah, They're for sure. Second to none. Everyone products. that uses them, I love them. Just love them. Just even hanging on their wall, they'll say how much they like them. But. Um, also, first day of summer, we have some employees that want tank tops, so ask and you shall receive. We're taking orders and passing it to everyone, so if you want to show off your muscles, or you ladies that want to show off your muscles, get these tank tops. They're looking pretty good. You're not going to get one? I don't know. Clem and I might go for that aqua one. I ordered one of each. I'm excited about them. I want one of them shaped. Let us know. $16. It's a good deal. Good deal. I think for these bowls, our new bowls we talked about, that Amber was using, I think we could throw those on the mule deer sale. 15% off the bowls, get those ordered, and we'll throw those on your mule deer sale now through Sunday. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's looking good. That's looking, looking like real a real rock. Yeah. So I'm not really, when we talk about painting rocks, it's not like taking here and just, you know, totally covering it. It's more just a really, really light, light layer on there. And as I'm putting it on with the brush, just kind of sit here and dab some of the color off because we don't want it to look painted. We want it to look natural. So we want to try stippling. Yep, stippling it with the sponge. And so what course. colors are you using on this rock? <laughs> this one here, I'm using the Desert Shade. And then that, once I put it on, I was like, eh, you know, we will mix and match colors a lot um, just to where we can get exactly what we're looking for. So that, this one, this was a little strong. So I went ahead and took a little bit of the ochre rust and mixed in with it to kind of tone down that orange and kind of bring it back a little bit. There's not a right or a wrong. It's kind of a like or a dislike. So. Right you're gonna come up with something that you really think is a good looking rock, remember how you did it. Yep. And it doesn't hurt to have a real rock that you're trying to copy laying beside you also. Right, right. I think Could we it. need to do a little bit of a employee shout out. We have a few employees that share everything we put out there. Um, Sherry Robinson, um, Angela Ross, uh, Kirsten Morris. Tell Jill, me about Kirsten. Kirsten's Joe back. Kolash is pretty good. Kirsten's back. She Kirsten, never left. Kirsten's back. She can't leave us. Um, Joe Kolash. Um, I know people that watch it. Cindy Peterson. Cam and Jake, they don't comment, but I think they secretly watch them. <laughs> um, let's see who am I missing. I don't know. A shout out to them because we couldn't do any of this without you guys. We have a pretty big crew making these products and all of our products. We're pretty proud of what we sell and uh, these guys make the best products on the market. Happily too. I mean, they're, it's a great place to work. Everybody here gets along really well and it's just kind of a, yeah, it's nice. We paid, I'll pay you later. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I've never seen a, a feud between employees. No, no. I no. can't believe never. we're actually sitting this close to each other. Like never. <laughs> Monica says, how about the bright red rocks from Wyoming? Oh, Monica. I'm still waiting for dirt, Monica. We got it. You do? Oh, well, yeah. we got our own dirt. Your own. Us. I'm ready to pass that dirt around a little bit. <laughs> That's some nice looking stuff. Monica lives in Wyoming, and Monica fixed us up with some of the most beautiful, beautiful 
red dirt, it goes really well on all your African mounts. That's pretty. And, and we sell a lot of dirt. But let me tell you, <laughs> we sell a lot of red dirt. <laughs> Monica is a Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy alumni now and ready to come back for the advanced course, right? We've been waiting. Yeah, I've been waiting with that truckload of dirt. <laughs> so now what color are you using? Blue? I don't think we sell that yeah, color. This is, where'd you find blue? It's <laughs> just a color. <laughs> She's going off She's going script, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone rogue. Um, don't forget our glove dispenser in the rack for those just tuning in. This rack allows it for easy pullout without them moving around that much. The rack is like $8 and the gloves are $13.95. Great deal. Amber's wearing them right now. They are three times more resistant to puncture wounds. They are really great. I mean, yeah. I've been running my hand on the mache. I've been... Durable, strong. With tools, all sorts of different things. Nitro. And I haven't had any problems with them. We gotta, no holes. We got to do a couple giveaways. So we have two giveaways to do. Um, one of Father's Day one, we did the Prana Knife. If those of you are missing out on our sales or our giveaways, give us your email list and you'll be the first to know about them. Um, we do a lot of different spotlights and sales and giveaways. So the winner of the Prana Knife is Zachary Dodd. Congratulations, Zachary. Congratulations. Let us know your address and we'll send that out for you. And the next one is the a reference CD, which has underwater pictures, 159 photos from Brett Wingfield himself, and a pack of variety of Euro pins. And the winner of that is Kenneth Kipp. Oh, right, way to go, Kenneth. Another Ken. Northwest Iowa School Tax Learning alumni. But um, congratulations, we'll get those sent out. Kenneth, I got your address, don't worry about it. Ken, um, thanks for help down at the Oklahoma yeah. show. My wife appreciated it. Yours and Chris. Yep, and help, we still have another up. giveaway we'll give, do. Okay, now, just think, you got a rock like this, you can put this on a really nice hardwood panel. You can put it, uh, um, you know, you could include it with a dirt base, you could use it standalone, you can have a duck standing up on here. Um, you can put a little moss in here, you can make it, make it look like a, a woodsy type scene. There's unlimited possibilities that you can do with these rocks. And sometimes to just highlight some of those edges after you're all done, I like to take a tool or sandpaper, something. You never show me that. That looks pretty good. Tom Roof and just says kinda... she is the Bob Ross of rock painting. Yeah. <laughs> looks okay. like a happy, happy little, little tree. Rock. Happy little rocks. <laughs> happy little scrape spot. Ooh, that really adds a lot. Yeah, just to kind of make them pop out a little bit. Just we think. are your go-to shop for rocks. We have an awesome kind of line down. of rocks and bases, and they are all hand-painted, and they are awesome. So Angela and Amber paint our oh, rocks. Oh, they're the they best do. rock painters. <laughs> Check them out. Um, have some, make some of these up and put them in your showroom, maybe with a duck on them or a fish on them, and uh, let your customers see them. And there's literally very little expense in these. I'll bet you got less than a couple dollars in a rock like this, yep. um, but you do have some time. And Not unless you teach your kids to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make sure that uh, you charge for your time. Do not give away your time as taxidermists. A lot of times we don't get paid um, as good as we should. So keep track of your time when you're making these and you're gonna get faster at them. You're gonna get better at them. They're gonna get better looking. You're gonna put them in your showroom and your customers are gonna say, I want that, I want that. And you say, step right up. If you want that, it's gonna cost this. Those are good looking rocks. We could almost grab some real ones and stick them in here. You wouldn't know what's, what's what. I can see a new catalog, catalog product coming up. The blue paint? <laughs> the, the blue, blue paint. paint. <laughs> Do you seal them after painting? Yes. Yep, yep. I usually will seal them with the matte finish. I like to let them dry for a while because there's a whole lot of moisture. And machine that takes we just a long time to dry, like yeah. days and days and days. Yeah. So you'll want to let them dry real good, but you do want to seal them with something because these are just, you know, I mean, you could wash it off. So we like to use just the matte sealer, the matte finish. And then, like if we're doing underwater scenes and you want it to have the gloss, gloss you can use sure. the gloss on them. 
I mean, these can be hot glued down, they can be, you know, yep. added and made into piles, made into formations. Yep, they really add a lot to your scenery. A lot, a lot, a lot. And you can get really creative with your stuff as soon as you start doing this. I, it's, uh, it's fun to see what people can come up with. And when you make a big mess like this, don't do it, like I said, for one rock. Make, make a dozen rocks. You can make a dozen rocks yep. without having to put all your stuff away and just leave them, lay around until yep. you need one and all of a sudden you're gonna say, that's exactly what I want or I wanna change the color. You can paint them, you can repaint them. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can just wash these right off and then go ahead and change the color at any time. So if you, you know, if you had one painted a reddish pink color and now you wanted something that was more of a limestone yellow, then go ahead and and wash them off as long as you haven't sealed them. So as soon as as soon as you know that you're not going to be changing your color, then go ahead and and seal the. Oh, that helped. Gary Stoll says, "I'm ever so glad I found all of you guys. You are definitely helping my work and my business." Awesome. Thanks for that. We appreciate that feedback a lot. Make sure you let other people know at shows. You can share us to the Tax Derby Talk sites and let other people know so we can help others and keep growing because the more this does well, he really enjoys them. And yeah. he learned a new song today. And, well, <laughs> some people might have missed it, so you have to go back to the beginning to catch Clem singing and jamming out for the rock video. He was but really bummed. Thank you. I met him out at the tour bus. He was bummed when... <laughs> I was changing the tire. <laughs> Let's talk giveaway before we get booted out. Um, giveaway, this week's giveaway. So you will have all week to like, share, tag a friend. So right now in the comments, tag a friend that you think needs to watch the rock video, like. And remember guys, we look for people to do all three things. So you must share it, you must tag a friend, and you must like it or show Tom the bubbles. Let's see some hearts and some likes and all that fun stuff. You can do it more good. than once. But anyway, our giveaway. You have a week to do it. For those of you that are watching late and it's not live, you can still join the party. Amber's favorite shop tool, her flexible bowl. Mm. She loves it. She lets it dry. Anything in there, it's reusable. She just squishes it and it clumps right out and it's perfect. We sell them in four sizes. They're online. We're going to give you her favorite size, the medium. Ooh. Medium, so that is a giveaway, and her sea sponge. So you get a sea sponge, which she's been using all day, yep. and the flexible bowl. So and like, share, tag a friend, and we'll announce the winner next week during the painting extended, because we are painting. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, we'll Rock part two. <laughs> but uh, stay tuned for that. Again, this is Matuska Tax Jeremy Supply Company, and we go live every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time. Um, and you can catch all of our videos from before on our Facebook, like and follow, and it will notify you when we go live. Join our email group because you can also get on with the sales. Don't forget the Mule Deer sale. When's your contest finish? June 30th. June 30th, June 30th, the $500 supply giveaway. So share this video. You are in for your chance to win this $500 support supplies. Imagine all the paint and tools and all that you could get. Sponges. Sponges palette knives. But yeah, thanks for tuning in guys. Give us a call and we will answer all of your questions and we'll see you next week. Thanks for coming. Thanks guys. Thanks guys.